I'm Nolan Winholtz, and uh, this is Roxanne, my Raku kiln made out of a 50 gallon drum. And she's lined with ceramic fiber. You can see the items I have in here now. They're cooling down. They have been at 2,000 degrees, and which melts the glaze. You see the crackle glaze and the copper glaze. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up. I'm gonna pull out right now two items. The first one's gonna be copper, and the second one's gonna be a variety of crackle glazes. I'm gonna put them into this pit behind me. It's a bit of sawdust from a planer, planer dust. And uh, you'll just see how this happens, uh, how the colors develop on the copper glaze. What is in this bottle is 70% alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And you'll see how I treat the glaze with the rubbing alcohol. And I use that only for the copper glazes. And then the first item I pull out here is going to have copper on it. So I sit this to the side. I'm going to reach in and get this cat because I don't want to bump the cat when I'm dealing with the octopus vase. Okay. Again, this gla these glazes melted at 2,000 degrees. Right here in the sawdust. And you're going to see how the, when I spray it with alcohol, how the, how the glaze is going to respond to the, to the burning. Okay, now, that's the first one, and the second item I'm going to do is going to be all crackle cat, calico happy cat. Let's go ahead and grab him. Alright. And when you're doing all crackle, you don't have to pull it out of peak temperature. And you can literally wait to listen to the crackling sounds. And when you hear the crackles, then that tells you it's time to go into the sawdust. But you don't want to go in too early. Okay, I can start hearing it now. All right, I'm going to bury them in the sawdust. And that reddish glaze you see on there is actually orange, kind of a yellowish orange. As the glaze cools, it's going to change colors. So right now I have a what I call my naughty cat. He's buried in here. He's sprayed with alcohol. When I pulled him out of the kiln, he's probably around 1400 degrees. So when I peaked the, the kiln at 2000 degrees, I literally cooled the kiln around 600 degrees, five to 600 degrees cooler before I start pulling stuff out. That's particularly important because some raccoon artists, they pull stuff out at very high temperatures and they got to get all covered up. And if you wait till the, the glaze cools a little bit, the vessel to cool a little bit, then you can pull it out without having to have all that other extra protection on because it's really, except for a few glazes for Raku, there's no advantage of peaking, pulling glazes out, pulling vessels out at peak temperature. It's a lot less painful. All right, now you can see, still very hot, but once the oxygen makes contact with the copper glaze, zoom in on that. You can see how the colors change like that. So I'm just gonna let this guy cool because the colors are changing really rapidly right now. So when they're changing rapidly, that lets me know that the vessel is still too hot to fool with. Let it cool maybe another 50 to 100 degrees. The colors will change, but they'll, they'll change more slowly. When they're changing slowly, that gives me the opportunity to control the color development over the surface of the, of the vessel. In this case, a naughty cat. Now while that one is still cooling another 100 degrees, I'm gonna look at this other cat that I just put in there. And this cat has no copper on him. He's just simply crackle. And I'm going to just inspect the crackle. I got a nice good crackle. Good. I'm going to leave him in there a little bit longer so that the, that the unglazed areas, this is a calico cat, so he's going to have orange, white, and unglazed areas which will register as black or dark gray once the item is finished. I'm going to leave him in there a bit longer. I'm gonna, while this is cooling, I'm going to look inside of my kiln and just judge the temperature from the look and the feel of it and the sound of the burner. And these items are really ready to pull right now. So I'm going to turn the, the gas up just a little bit because I don't want them to get too cold. Okay. Without a 
hold these at temperature. You gotta hold these at temperature long enough, hot enough, so when I have time to deal with them, they'll be perfect to go through the raccoon process. This is my version of raccoon. It's a version of what was taught to me by my mentor, Bruce O'Dell. He does something similar. I do some things a little bit differently, but uh, you can see how it works. You melt the glaze at 2,000 degrees, let the vessel cool down to at least 1,500 degrees before you even fool with it. I think it's probably closer to 1,400 degrees. I reach in one at a time, pull the items out, go into the pit of solvent. All right, now this guy's probably done. Now, I can handle him two ways. I can just sit him on a brick, or I can quench him in water. I'm gonna sit this guy right here. And he's gonna watch the rest of our firing from right there. When it's done, I'll, I'll take a scrubby path to him and clean him up real good. Now, the other item I have in the pit, it's probably cool enough now for me to fool with. Watch the colors change as the oxygen makes contact. All right. This is copper calico, I call this. You got copper glazes becoming all these different colors. This side cooled a little bit too fast. I'm going to reheat this. I wanted to show you this because if you're not satisfied with the, the way the glaze is looking, and since this was the first item fired, the pit was kind of cold, so certain areas cooled faster than other areas. So rather than leaving it dull, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a quick shot of heat with this torch, and then I'm going to reintroduce it to us and hopefully get a much better effect. See, when you're in business and you got to make everything sellable, you can't have an item that's just a ho-hum. you got to make sure it's beautiful. Now, when I get these reds and blues that I like, I'm going to cover those areas up. I'm going to move them around. I'm going to work this vessel, blow on it a little, little bit, try to get some extra oxygen to it. Wait for the reds to come up. The golds are coming up. The reds are coming up. This area is still a little cold. Blue red. That's nice. Nice color there, nice color there, nice color on the face. Okay, now I'm gonna need you to back up so I can take it and quench it in the water. So I shake the sawdust out of the cat, I go into the water and hold on to it. Hold on to it just for a few seconds. Hey guys. Let me get nice and cool before I turn him loose. Alright, I'm just gonna let him sit in there for a few minutes. It's important to hold on to the vessel so it doesn't crack and pop in the water. All right. Now that you've seen these two items done, one with the crackle, one with the copper, now you're going to see me pull out the big guy. This is a vase I made. It's for my friend who has ordered it, a good buddy, Jack Masters from uh, Louisiana Tech University. We went to college back in the, the mid-80s. And uh, he saw this online, and he said, i got to have one of those. So I made this. Just for you, Jack Masters. This is it. She's coming out. Okay, there it is. I gotta reach in there, grab it. Such a way as to not I'll open this up just a little bit further. Let's do this. Okay. This lid back on the kiln. Don't lose any more heat. So you can see there's the copper areas, the dark areas, and the crackle areas are the light areas. Now I want this, I want the creature themselves to be really good with a nice heavy crackle. I'm just gonna go ahead and bury them real quick and get that going. And while that's going, I'm gonna work these other areas with some alcohol torch you can see what's happening pre-treating the copper glaze I'm pre-treating the copper glaze so that when I later expose oxygen to it I get the best results right now I got a good crackle on the head of the tentacles of the creature so I'm going to spin it around I'm going to treat the other areas of the flame
work this blade until it's nice and shiny. See my, uh, I buy a box fan every couple of weeks. Right. I'm gonna spin him around again. do this without the box fan but it flames sometimes will spin around and He's too hot to fool with right now. <clears throat> Colors are changing very, very rapidly. So I'm just gonna let him sit there and cool for a few minutes. Wipe the sweat off my face. It was 95 degrees here earlier today. I'm in the panhandle of Florida. Right now the sun's down, behind the building, not too bad. Not too bad at all. You can just well imagine that's 100 degrees out here, but this is like this is a temporary location for my kilns. This building you see behind me is going to be my studio. We're going to pour a slab, and I'm actually going to set up a bigger raku kiln. Okay, nice color. Nice color happening, but it's really fast. So I'm just going to leave him covered there. Let him chill out. And while that's happening, let's pull this cat out of the water and I'll show you what he looks like. Wish we had the bright sunlight. Now, as he dries, he will brighten up considerably. The reds will really pop, the golds will pop, the blues will pop. And a lot of this carbon you see on his belly and on his face, that will scrub off with a little Scotch Bright pad. We'll get whiskers, a feather, and he is called my naughty cat. Right. Now it's cooled a few more minutes. Let me I'm gonna spin them around. I'm gonna examine the, the copper, see how it's responding to the oxygen, and that'll tell me if it's time to start fooling it. Okay, we got nice development. Nice color. Still happening a little fast, faster than I want to deal with right now. Very happy with the, the way the crackle looks. You'll find you'll have better results with crackle if you don't pull the vessel out at peak temperature because when you let it cool down to about 1500 degrees, <clears throat> it'll start to solidify. It won't crackle, but it'll solidify and you can, you can actually touch it with the metal tongs. This is especially important when you're just doing a vessel that's strictly crackled. So um, then you can touch it without scarring it when you let it harden a little bit. The crackles happen, I think, I'm guessing around 14, 13 to 1400 degrees. So wait for the crackles to happen, then submerge it in sawdust, and you'll get a better result. Of course, if you wait too long, the crackles won't be very exciting. When you practice, you'll learn. Okay, I'm going to spin him around one more time. I'm going to work the top half of him first because that's the area that's cooling the fastest. The breadth of this form is, has thinner walls, so it's losing heat faster. The bottom half is thicker, so it's holding heat longer. So I'm going to work the vessel the top half first and then the bottom half after it's had more time to cool.
shoulder, the neck's a little dull. Okay. A good color here. I'm gonna look at it one more time, give it a quick shot of oxygen. Move it around. Alright. Good color there. Good color here. Good color there. Nice purple's coming up there. I'm gonna leave that alone. The gloves are wet, so they don't burn up. They do transfer heat. As long as you don't touch the vessel too long, you're okay. Nice color there. Nice color there. Nice color there. Just waiting for the reds to pop. The reds are coming up nicely. All right. Now I'm going to spin it around again, and I'm going to start working the bottom half. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cool off my gloves because they're actually quite hot. Right Anytime you touch the vessel with wet, with wet gloves, you, you cool that area, so you got to be very careful how you handle it. ready to come out into the water. A little more color here. I'm going to give it a final inspection. A little more reds here. This is the back side. Okay, better. Alright, now I'm about to come out. I'm going into that bucket of water. Now to submerge the heads of the octopus too too much and too long in case any steam builds up inside of them. I don't want them to pop. It's really a bummer to get it all the way through the process and have a break at this point. So, now I'm pretty confident that everything is cool enough where it's not going to be in any danger. I can leave it in the water. See how it's cool enough where the water is not drowning too fast. Still hot. I'm going to leave them in here for just a minute. All right. Tomorrow, I'll take some photographs in the sunlight. They're going to look really nice and bright. Okay. Now, so many of you who have done Raku, this is a bit different than what you've seen. You don't have to do it this way. <clears throat> Way it kind of freaks people out when they watch me do this. That's okay. Let me get this bird. This is my dodo bird. Treating it with the alcohol, you get much better results than you would otherwise. All right. That's how I do it. Yeah, this is Nolan Round Tree Pottery, stationed right now at West Florida Teen Challenge, Bonifay, Florida. And uh, you can check me out at uh, Nolan's Potter's House Ministry on Facebook or Round Tree Pottery on Facebook. That's where I'm doing most of my online stuff. All right, God bless you. Hope you enjoyed that and learned something.